Well, what a horrific day for Odessa, Hector County, Milling, Milling County. I have to do something. I don't know what the answer is. But people need to come together to find an answer. It just, that's just horrible. Nine plus years that I've been a police officer with the Odessa Police Department, this is by far the, the worst thing I've ever experienced. Tragedy struck Midland, Odessa. We have an active shooter on the interstate westbound. I'm still heading westbound. But it's de it's really devastating. It's like a like a nightmare. Like you're not waking up from. Big Two is coming together to honor the victims and their families. We came to the wood together, you know. And <laughs> she left me behind, you know. In this special, we will talk about how the basin is recovering in the face of disaster. West Texans are known for being tough. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this special program. I'm Katie Orth. And I'm Amanda Mason. We start tonight remembering the seven innocent victims who were killed in Saturday's deadly shooting in the Permian Basin. We start with 15-year-old Layla Hernandez, who was among those shot and killed on Saturday. Hernandez was an Odessa High School sophomore and played on the basketball team. Friends and classmates came together to honor her memory outside of the classroom. Hernandez just celebrated her quinceanera in May. We did uh, lose uh, one of our, our students in this tragic incident, and so clearly, you know, on behalf of the 4,000 employees that we serve and the 34,000 kids that are a part of our system, you know, we send our condolences to that family. Some things are in the works, so I, you know, working with the principal um, of the school and the administrative team to, to kind of understand what we best for the family. I don't know why it happened to her, but it just did, and it shouldn't have, because she's a good Someone that's sweet and kind doesn't deserve to go through this. Her hugs, they were, they made people's days. And she was the most nicest, kindest person to everyone. Why does she have to go? Because I still need her here. I really do. She should have never went. Students across the basin worn yellow earlier this week in Layla's honor. And in tonight's football game, the Odessa High Broncos are paying special tribute to the 15-year-old. Her funeral was held earlier today. Rodolfo Arco, also known as Rudy, lost his life on Saturday. His family says Rudy was a loving father. He was driving home from work when he was hit by gunfire. He was shot and killed. Big 2's Jocelyn Person sat down with Rudy's family. One of my favorite parts was just... Just being with him growing up. Rudy Argo was a father, a friend, and a husband who everyone enjoyed being around. He was just always just a great dad. He was always looking out for me, always took care of me, taught me how to be a man, how to fix things, you know, how to be a father for my children. Uh, he, just, he was just a good person growing up. On August 31st, that's when Argo's family faced a tragedy they will never forget. We couldn't find my dad. Uh, and uh, my sister was just looking for him, uh, so it scared us. And my, my sister went to one hospital first and uh, thought he might be there, and no. After searching, Artie's sister saw what she didn't expect to see. And uh, when she went to another hospital, she found his truck uh, crashed and with bullet holes in it. Rudy was one of the seven victims shot and killed by the Odessa shooter. And in his life, Rudy, known as a caretaker. Honest person, you know, somebody who just put others before himself, that took care of everybody. Rudy's spirit will always be remembered. Those who know him, they love him, uh, just because he, he was a, a funny actor, such a bubbly person who put a smile on everybody's face. Uh, even in bad situations, when things were tough, you know, he, he made the best out of it. And he will be remembered as a good person. I want everybody to remember what... what a, he was such a good person, and he has just deserved so much better than to go like this. Oh. Rudy moved to Odessa after the Las Vegas mass shooting there. He lived in Odessa for about one year.
And 29-year-old Mary Granados of Odessa is another one of the seven innocent lives taken on Saturday. Mary was engaged and excited to celebrate the Labor Day holiday. Her family says that she will be remembered for her lively personality. She was just three months shy of 30. Granados was killed while at work delivering mail, and then her vehicle was hijacked by the shooter. This doorbell camera video shows Granados delivering mail on Saturday in Odessa just before being shot. She was just one year into the job, and she also had a twin sister that sat down with Big Two. I just wish she could be back. You know, I wish I could at least hug her again, give her a kiss. You know, talk to her. And I don't know where she's at right now, but wherever she is, I hope she's looking at this. And I hope that, that she's watching. And I want to I wanna tell her that I love her so much. And I'm never going to forget her because she was my other half. We came to the world together, you know, and she left me behind, you know. The United States Postal Service releasing a statement over the loss of one of their own saying, quote, we are especially grieving the loss of our postal family member, letter carrier, Mary Granados, age 29. We will continue to keep her family in her, in her in our thoughts. Granados, so full of life, will be honored during a mass tomorrow afternoon at St. Joseph's Church. Her viewing was held yesterday. A man taking his family to take photos shot and killed right in front of his wife and two children. We're talking about Joe Griffith, a tragic situation. Big Two's Jack I Jake Eichstead sat down with his big sister. Um, on Saturday, my baby brother left his home with his wife and his two children to go and get their photos made, family pictures. And as he was at a light at Fodgery, this monster drove up next to his car, stopped, took his AR-15, leaned out of the postal van, and shot my brother in front of his children. My brother, my brother was slain like he was nothing. They had to pull him out onto the side of the road. My sister-in-law had to tell my nephew and niece to sit in the bar ditch out of traffic as she tried to stop the flow of blood. I want the world to know that my brother was, was such a good man who loved the Lord, who loved his family, and his life was taken too soon. We have to do something. I don't know what the answer is. But people need to come together to find an answer. This isn't about wanting to take away everyone's guns. This isn't, this isn't a Republican issue or, or a Democratic issue. This is a, an issue about humanity. And the worst thing we can do is for good men to do nothing. Carla asks for everyone to offer support and love for the Griffith family, as well as the other victims and their families. Funeral services for Joe were held earlier today at First Baptist in Odessa. Raul Garcia was among the victims. Garcia was the last victim to be identified by police. And Garcia is from El Paso and graduated from El Paso High School. He was one of the truck drivers shot along Interstate 20. Garcia leaves behind four children. His body was taken to El Paso for his funeral service, which will be held tomorrow. Another of the fallen, Cameron Brown. Brown was a former Army veteran. Big Two's Kelsey Pittman has more on his life. You were a hero to me in this world. You were somebody that I looked up to, even though you were my younger brother. And I miss you. Cameron Brown, Army veteran, brother, Coleman native, and one of the seven killed in the Odessa mass shooting. Just, you know, suspended in time trying to figure out what's really going on. Carlton Brown found out about his brother through a phone call from his cousin. I didn't want to believe it. Then he had to deliver the heartbreaking news to the rest of the family. I just called my mother, told her she needs to sit down, and I broke the news to her, and I knew it was going to crush her. 
I called my sister. I told her the news, and I told her she needed to go come home. To those who knew him, Karen was always his own person, funny and strong-spirited. He knew how to make everybody laugh. Always uh, wanted to make sure that your spirits were up even when he wasn't always at his best. Even through PTSD, Cameron stayed a fighter. He battled with that pretty hard, and, and he overcame it. I mean, you don't ever really get rid of it. After overcoming challenge after challenge, finally being in a good place, the news of his death came as a shock. It was probably the hardest day of my life. It was a nightmare. It still is a nightmare. And no matter the circumstance, these brothers never grew apart. I always told him that I loved him. In Abilene, Kelsey Pittman, Big Two News. For more than a year, Cameron was an employee of Standard and Safety Supply. His funeral will be held on September 12th in Brownwood. Edwin Peregrino was one of the first victims. He was shot and killed instantly outside of his parents' home. Big Two's Jocelyn Person sat down with his neighbor. She has the story. To know that he's gone for somebody so selfish. Who you see here is Edwin Peregrino, one of the first victims shot and killed instantly by the Odessa shooter in this neighborhood near 38th and Walnut. A neighbor who doesn't want to be shown says once she received the bad news from her mother, she hoped Edwin wasn't gone. I called my mom. I, I swear I prayed for a different answer that Edwin wasn't shot or that he was getting up or he's okay. And no, he was dead. Edwin's neighbor says Edwin and his brother-in-law came out the back door and heard gunshots, and that's when they were both shot. Edwin was killed instantly. For him to have been, you know, lying in their home dead for seven hours, it just, it's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. Edwin's neighbor says Edwin was a person everyone enjoyed being around. It hurts to know that Edwin is not here, and he, you can ask anybody who knew him, he was a beautiful soul. He cared about everybody. You never heard anybody say anything bad about Edwin. Edwin also enjoyed his life and wouldn't want to see others in pain. I know Edwin, he wouldn't want to see us cry because as he would say, before Saturday, he was living his best life. So I know that he'd want everybody still to live your best life. In Odessa, Joss in person, Big Two News. Edwin was only in town for a visit seeing his parents, and his funeral service was held in Odessa yesterday. A mass and burial service was held earlier today at St. Mary's. Meanwhile, seven white crosses are on display near the corner of 2nd Street and Sam Houston. And each one representing each of the victims killed. The crosses came from Xana's Crosses for Losses. Similar crosses have been present at other mass shootings, including Dayton and El Paso. The victims' names and where they died are written on them. As we honor those who lost their lives, we're celebrating those who have recovered. One Midland police officer got a big send-off from Medical Center Hospital this week. Fellow law enforcement, hospital staff, friends all cheered as Officer Zach Owens was released. Officer Owens is now in Alabama getting further treatment on his eye, thanks to one local business. We have helped um, uh, Officer Owens get into the the best trauma eye surgeon in the, and we believe in the world. Owens underwent surgery yesterday. Midland police are optimistic that the specialist will help Zach get back home and back on the force. And in a week filled with darkness, there was a glimmer of light. Odessa police officer Corporal James Santana is now home recovering. Thank you for all the support. This was the scene at Medical Center Hospital just after 1 p.m. Corporal James Santana shot while putting his life on the line Saturday and treated for a wound to his leg. Members of OPD, first responders, and civilians came to show appreciation and support. It's awesome. I mean, it, means, it means a whole lot, uh, not only to James, but to the Odessa Police Department. So I'm sure he appreciated it. James is a great guy. I've, not, I've personally known him for over eight years now. And uh, I'm just so glad he's okay. Santana was one of three law enforcement officers shot. He is the first to be released. 
both Chuck Pryor and Zach Owens are still receiving treatment. But for Santana, his recovery, emotionally and physically, will now be at home. Uh, well, when he passed by, I just wished him the best of luck, and our prayers are with him and his family. And um, He's a hero, man, and um, we just hoping, hope for a speedy recovery. We're here to support him, whatever we can do. And as the community continues the healing process, we are elated to see that he can begin his own. Welcome home, Corporal Santana. The son of the DPS trooper who was shot in Saturday's mass shooting was escorted to school by fellow troopers after the incident. His father, Chuck Pryor, is in fair condition. We're told he's in good spirits. Pryor was the one who pulled over the gunman for a traffic violation, and he was shot in the face. However, his son here feeling all the support as he heads back to school this week. A 17-month-old girl is also among those wounded, but she is now back home with her family. Anderson Davis is expected to make a full recovery. Her family praising doctors and first responders. The Davis family also said they were happy to reunite Anderson with her twin brother at home. She's 17 months old, so she's just a young child, so um, uh, I'm sure she didn't know exactly what was happening. Uh, her parents, though, were very strong and handled everything very well. Obviously, everything went very well because she was able to go home less than 24 hours after first getting here. So no major complications. Everything went pretty smoothly. So many stayed sheltered in their home Saturday. Friends and families of victims were left waiting. One Basin resident spoke to Big Two while she was waiting for any news. Excuse me. He was waiting for any news on his boss who was shot and being treated at MCH. Unbelievable. You, you, don't, you don't know what it feels like until it happens to somebody you know. He asked them, have you seen what's going on today around town? Have you looked at the news? And they said no. And the guy pulled the rifle up and said, have a good day, boom, and shot him, you know. But there's a lot of other people up in there that need praying for, and the, especially the ones that lost their loved ones, you know, it's just unbelievable. You, you don't. Many patients have been released. However, some are still recovering. We have an update on the conditions of the victims being treated at local hospitals. A medical center hospital in Odessa, they say that three of the patients have been released. Three other patients remain in two in good, fair condition and one in good, excuse me, two in fair condition and one in good condition. And then over at ORMC, two patients remain in stable condition. And at last check at Midland Memorial Hospital, four patients were in stable condition. What was supposed to be a celebration for one local family at Synergy quickly became a nightmare. Big Two's Alyssa Tea spoke with them about their experience getting caught in the middle of the shooter's rampage. Leaving with a half-eaten birthday cake, party favors, and an encounter they will never forget. Oh God, they're shooting right there. Spending a Saturday afternoon celebrating their two sons' birthday at Synergy. We were going to gather and uh, just have pizza and cake with our friends and then go bowling. Charlene Pinpin says she saw people running outside. Confused, I, I wasn't sure if it was something to do with the birthday party or maybe a fire drill or something. The Pinpin family says they were rushed outside fleeing to the back of the synergy. Charlene saying she heard two words over and over again. Someone yell, uh, active shooter, active shooter, run. Once outside, Charlene saw chaos. She says she didn't know where the shooter was. It was terror on a lot of the children's faces. A lot of children were crying. Um, so it was just panic and confusion. Then the scene turned calm. So we thought um, we were okay, um, that maybe they had gotten him. A few minutes later, a police officer told them to go back inside, but not soon enough. Um, we heard somebody yell, get down, so we all sprawled on the ground. Right That's there. when I heard oh, um, he hit the, the engine the of what I thought was a vehicle coming towards us. I looked up, um, still kind of bracing our, the people around us, and I saw this van coming, and it was, I mean, charging. Charlene did what any mother would do. I just got on top of my youngest son and prayed out loud, and I don't think I've ever prayed so hard before in my life. Watching the rest of the scene unravel before their eyes. I saw a police cruiser come and strike it from the side. I saw the rear end of this mail van kind of <laughs> pop up, glass shattered, and then 
it ended up on its side, um, kind of blocking uh, the street. I saw a police cruiser bounce across the um, border, and then um, I started hearing shots firing. The family says they didn't know where the shots were coming from. Praying hard for uh, God's protection over everyone, um, that no one would be hurt or killed. The family making it home safely, but reeling for the rest of the night. I just got on top of my youngest son and prayed out loud, and I don't think I've ever prayed so hard before in my life. Thinking about it happening in their own hometown. My youngest son was still very shaken up, and um, it took um, you know me having to rock him to sleep for him to be able to settle down and fall asleep. Still grateful they made it home, along with friends and family, while also keeping their faith. What we have seen here in West Texas is that people do look out for each other and do help each other. Through the tragedy, we are learning how strong our community really is. Medical Center Hospital still evaluating its procedures when dealing with massive traumas. Officials say while their response was successful, tweaks will always need to be made. The situation will be recreated just to make sure each department is working as efficiently as possible. Uh, we're, we have scheduled meetings for the next couple months, honestly, just to rehash it, go through each department, and just to really rework the situation and make sure we can be more efficient. Now let's break down a timeline of events from August 31st. According to officials, the 36-year-old gunman was fired by his employer, Journey Oil Field Services, Saturday morning. Now authorities say that the gunman and his employer called 911 on each other, and the shooter also called the FBI tip line, rambling about all of the autocracies that he went through. Now authorities say that no threats were made during the call. But 15 minutes later, around 3 p.m., the gunman was pulled over by a DPS trooper for not using his turn signal. DPS says the suspect pointed a gun from inside his car and shot at two of the officers in their patrol unit, injuring one. And here's exclusive video from near Interstate 20 and Loop 250. DPS troopers pulling over a gold car just before 3.30 on Saturday afternoon. This is the scene after the shooter fired shots at the DPS patrol unit. The 36-year-old then made his way down Interstate 20 toward Odessa, shooting randomly at civilians. He made his way to 42nd Street in Odessa, then drove to the 3800 block of North Adams and North Dixie. That's where he hijacked a USPS van and continued continued his shooting spree. And police continue to track him when they met him at Synergy. This is the video shot by an eyewitness at the scene where the gunman's deadly tirade came to an end. A shootout occurred at the Synergy in Odessa. The 36-year-old shooter shot and killed by police after shooting more than 20 people, killing seven. So what exactly do we know about the gunman? Online records show the 36-year-old was charged in 2001 with a misdemeanor of criminal trespassing and evading arrest. And according to Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the shooter previously failed a federal background check. One law enforcement official says he was blocked from getting a gun in 2014 due to mental health issues, leaving the question, how did he obtain the AR-style rifle? Well, according to the officials, the shooter bought the rifle through a private sale, this allowing him to evade another federal background check. It's not illegal to be uh, not mentally sane. The affidavit, search warrant, and a list of findings from officials remain sealed. We have submitted a Freedom of Information Act request for further findings. FBI raided the home of the shooter Saturday. Big 2 News was on scene the entire time. Our Monica Cantero spoke with neighbors trying to learn more about the shooter. I had problems with him before. He had come over to my property because there was trash in a barrel, so he came over and he had a large rifle. So he came and told me it was the last time he was going to bug me about the trash. After he left, he had his large rifle, so I called the police so they could confront him. I was scared because my kids were outside, but the police never arrived. The reason the police gave us for not coming out was the GPS could not find the location, so the police never came out. We're continuing to learn more and more about the shooter. ATF and the FBI have continued their investigations. 
A producer with ABC News tells us that there may have been a link between a raided home in Lubbock and the shooting here in Odessa. A search warrant was executed on Wednesday night. Now the investigation is still active. More details are pouring in about Saturday's shooting. And you can stay updated with us on our story on air and online at yourbasin.com. In light of the mass shooting and the lives lost, the Basin is coming together to help those families in need. And you can help too. Many fundraisers and events are happening across Odessa and Midland in hopes of providing some relief to the families. The Odessa Chamber of Commerce taking donations for funerals and medical costs for the victims. If you would like to donate, you can visit our website, yourbasin.com. There you can find how to donate through the city as well as how to donate to individual victims. The Midland Police Department is taking donations for Officer Zach Owens as well as the force. An account has been set up at Midland Community National Bank under Officer Owens. Midland PD asking that you take your monetary donations there. Midland Park Mall getting involved by teaming up with Vitalant to host a blood drive. Midland Police and Fire Departments coming together and donating at Back the Badges Blood Drive. Organizers hope the drive will combat shortages at local hospitals. The drive happening right now. It will continue until Sunday at Midland Park Mall. And one Odessa jeweler is working to help victims. Izzy's Fine Jewelry is selling West Texas Charms for $50 each. The proceeds will go to victims of Saturday's mass shooting and their families. To purchase one, you can visit the downtown Odessa location. Curbside Bistro doing what they can to help as well. This Sunday, the restaurant is hosting a pancake fundraiser. They're offering $10 all-you-can-eat pancakes with the proceeds going to the victims of Saturday's shooting. And UT Permian Basin is also accepting donations for victims and their families. The university is asking for water bottles and food for those affected by this weekend's tragedy. Many in the basin are left still asking them for help themselves. And after witnessing the traumatic events on Saturday, many are working together to make sure that those in the Permian Basin are getting the help that they need. The Crisis Center of West Texas offering up their services. The center is available to victims, victims' families, first responders, anyone who witnessed the shooting and is traumatized. The center is set up at the Ector County Annex from 9 until 7. That's for the next few days. If you need immediate help, though, the Crisis Center encourages you to call the 24-7 hotline. That number is right there on your screen. And Samaritan Counseling Center is offering help for those impacted by this weekend's tragic events. The center is open tomorrow from 8 in the morning until 6. To make an appointment, you can contact the number on your screen. As our community continues to heal, we will be with you every step of the way. We will continue to help shine the light through the darkness. And we are, and forever will be, West Texas strong. I just got on top of my youngest son and prayed out loud, and I don't think I've ever prayed so hard before in my life. Words alone are inadequate. You are a hero to me in this world, and I miss you. Words must be met with action. People need to come together to find an answer. 